Today I'm looking at this. This is the uh, the Anker Series 7 of the um, 737. It's the Anker 737 power bank. And uh, this is, well, it's the kind of power bank where you kind of say, who would spend £150 on a power bank? Because all this is, really, is a couple of cells packaged up into a nice interface. You know, you've got a lovely little, lovely little screen on here. Really dim, actually, this screen. Very, very dim. But gives you nice information. They always they say don't leave it on, but fine. So this is effectively an 86.4 watt hour battery. And uh, it has the selling point, I suppose, the, the big plus point of this particular power bank is the fact that it can support Power Delivery 3.1. Now, Power Delivery 3.1 allows up to 240 watts, I think, of, uh, of, of, uh, of power. But this device goes up to 140 watts. So this thing can suck in 140 watts, which means charging times are incredible on this. Not only that, because it supports Power Delivery 3.1, the port at the top here can go into any laptop or any device that supports power delivery. So this can just go into your regular, uh, any sort of USB charging device, of any, you know, any device that needs to be charged via USB. But in my case, and this is why I like it, I am using it on my work laptop. In the past, I've always had, I can't, I'm not gonna show you my work laptop because it's got stuff on it that, you know, I, I wouldn't want to put on YouTube, but, um, in the past, I've had a big hefty work laptop. It didn't have, uh, power delivery in. I've now got a sort of much smaller, much lighter, slimmer Microsoft Surface laptop. And I'm using this at the moment. I'm recharging this from my from other batteries which are charged via solar and things like that. So this just gets charged up and this can go with me anywhere to charge and keep my laptop charged. So in this in the case that I'm using it now, it's a fully it's fully charged, so really this is just being used as a power adapter. So let's have a look how much power it's actually taking in. So we can see here that we've got 39% left in this at the moment. It's using about 6.4 watts of power, which is amazing, really. You know, I've got my laptop running here, it's got the screen on, and it's only using six watts of power. Uh, you can see that it's plugged into port C1, so USB C1. You've also got a USB C2. To combine, they can provide uh, 140 watts. It's not sort of each. And uh, then USB A, which is an 18 watt USB A port. And here's the rough time we've got left on this. So, you know, it's now half three in the afternoon. So, this would provide me with enough power to last at least another two hours, 46 minutes, which is fine because of course then once it runs out, I've still got the laptop battery. This is just keeping the laptop at 100%. On top, you've got the two power delivery ports, the USB-C ports, and there you go, there's your USB-A port. Other than that, there really is nothing to it. You've got on the screen, there are two options. You can display that information, but you can also display this information, which is, which is quite nice. Not, not essential. Nice that they've put it here. So we've got uh, the temperature of the power bank in uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then we have the battery performance, which is currently at 100%. How many cycles it's done. And these are true cycles. These are not kind of what people often perceive to be a cycle of a battery, i.e. a charge and a recharge. These are full cycles of the battery. So I'm, a, I'm guessing it's looking at this figure here. So how, mu how many watt hours has been put into this battery? So once this gets to 259 watt, hour, uh, watt hours, I imagine that will change to three because then the battery will have had its full capacity put into it three times, regardless of how many times I charged it. I could just charge it, you know, 10%, however many times. So, and there's how many watt hours I've actually got out of the battery, and this is how many times I've used the screen. Totally useless statistic. I've absolutely no idea why that's there, but, but it is. And then you can have this set to uh, leave the screen on if you want. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can if you want. They suggest you don't because it uses obviously more power. But there's the power bank in actual sort of use, but let's just see what it's like at charging. And the only way I can do this is by using the cable that comes with it, which is this USB-C uh, power delivery. So it supports, this is says on it that it supports 140 watts somewhere on the cable, I think. Yeah, it does. It says just there, you might be able to read that, it says max 140 watts. And uh, I'm going to plug this into my Mac, MacBook power supply, because this is the only power supply I have that will provide 
140 watts as well. So let's just take it out of my laptop for the time being. And I'm gonna bring over this battery here, another slightly more, slightly bigger battery. I'm gonna probably have to move my laptop slightly because this big power supply is gonna to have to fit in here. Now this thing can only push, push out, I think 300 watts on its mains inverter, something like that. So we should be fine with that. That should be perfectly capable of doing the job. I'm just gonna plug that into there. And now all we do, plug it into the uh, th this port here. This is the only one that is at the input and output. That one's just an output. And let's turn this on. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna put the display on there, turn the mains on, and then I'm gonna show you this. Okay, we're at point one. And look at, look at, there we go. Look, we're ramping up now. 77, 90 watts, 103 watts, 124 watts. 127 watts, 128, is that gonna be our max? There we go. So we're now charging at 128 watts of power. This is more, this is a faster charge rate than this or the other anchor um, power station that I've got, which are both maximum 120 watts. This is 60 watts solar, or six, sorry, 60 watts USB-C, 60 watts DC in, and the other one I've got is uh, 120 watts total. This is, so this is, this little tiny thing is taking power at a faster rate than these huge things, or these much larger things anyway. But look, 31 minutes this will take to charge. And you can see just how quickly that percentage is going up. It's incredible. Let's have a look on the actual battery and see what sort of usage we've got happening here. So we can see on the mains out, I've got 155 watts coming out here. So we've got some serious loss. And this is typical, you know, this is typical of a, of a mains inverter. Uh, we've got, I mean, just, just think how warm this thing's gonna get. This brick is gonna get really warm. So, so much is being lost through heat, just lost in, in probably in the cable, just in the whole conversion of voltages and things from the voltage of this, this to the mains back to whatever, I don't know, but either way, We've got 154 watts coming out of this, but it's actually only charging this at 128 watts figure. Look, already up to 43%. There you go. You should just be able to see now that this has reached 100%. And even at 100%, this is still pulling 32 watts, 33 watts from this thing. Is that actually the power pack or is it, let me just unplug, if I unplug the actual device, that drops down to 12 watts. Fine, okay, so it's taken a bit of power out of this. It's put it all into this. So this now contains 86.4 watt hours of power, temp uh, theoretically. So remember, if you're gonna be using this for charging uh, something like a MacBook or even charging for a smaller laptop from lower a low percentage, this is potentially gonna be taking like 100 watts of power, and this isn't gonna last long at 100 watts. This is only gonna last sort of 50 minutes or so. So it's not something that's gonna be able to power a big laptop like that for a long time. What this is, is something to be able to take you, massively extend your battery life, uh, take you through a day if you're just doing standard sort of work stuff and nothing like majorly heavy like video editing or rendering or you know computational stuff like that, but it, it is what it is. It's 86 watt hours of power in a package like this that supports pretty much every kind of device because, it, because of the USB-C and USB-A. But what I thought I'd also do quickly is just plug in my iPhone because my iPhone's down at a fairly low percentage. It's down at 28% at the moment. So I'm going to plug that in and just, just to give you that confidence that this will support your kind of fast charging as well on an iPhone. So when I plug this in, what I would expect to see is I would expect to see this negotiate and ramp up to a fast charge of about 25 watts or something like that. So let's have a look, see what this does. So we're down, no, so now, okay, so now it's switching and I'd expect it to now go up. And it's now, it's now negotiated a higher charge rate. So a fast charge rate on the iPhone. So we're, we're pumping up now. 20 watts, 21, 25, 26.8, 
26.8 watts of, char of, uh, of power being used to charge the iPhone. So that has now gone into a fast charge from the USB-C output on here into the iPhone. This is an iPhone um, 13 Pro Max uh, on the lightning connector. To show you that the temperature works, so this is now fairly warm actually because it's just been, had a ton of power dumped into it. So if we take a look on there now, we can see that this is up at 40 Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit. And we've now gone past that marker that I just, uh, spoke about just before. We're up to 304 watt hours into the battery. So we've now moved over to three cycles of this battery. I, because this is so quick to charge, I can see those cycle counts ramping up pretty quickly. I really, really like this. Um, just really handy. I just used it. I've been away for the last uh, day and um, I just threw this in my bag and just really, really nice to know that I can do a full day's work on my laptop knowing that by the end of it, I will have 100% and 100% uh, on my laptop and I'll just be able to then go from 100% the next day. Other good thing is you can, I think you can double tap on here if you do want to trickle charge your devices. So if you don't want to push too much power into your devices, you can just double tap, tap on this and it will just allow you to charge your devices a little less aggressively. So if you're not, if you want to use the power delivery, but you don't want to push the maximum power into it, then you can just, you know, take, basically say to this thing, take it easy. Don't want to do it quite so quickly. That's the Anker 737. As usual, I'll put uh, links in the video description. Just a little bit more of an informal video today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little look at, the, at this product. If you want to support the channel, please do use the links in the, in the uh, description. They're Amazon affiliate links, so I get a small commission if you buy anything off Amazon after you've clicked those links. It doesn't matter what you buy, but um, it's up to you. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon.